Okay, let's talk stimulus checks. Uh, this is part of the American Rescue Plan that was signed on March 11th. Uh, bigger numbers than what we had in the CARES Act, and, and, but different rules. So under the CARES Act, uh, we got, you know, the first round was like $1,200, um, but what we considered as far as dependents was not necessarily dependents we're seeing with the, the, the ARPA plan here. So before under the CARES Act, we could only count those dependents that were uh, that we claimed the child credit for, which were basically anybody under 17. Under this new rule, uh, under the, the ARPA plan, it's basically anybody that shows up as a dependent on my tax return. So now my college age kids can help me. Uh, grandma can help me if she's on my, my return as a dependent. Um, so uh, again, it's big, bigger dollars. So it, it's $1,400 per person uh, when, when we qualify. And so say I'm a, a married couple uh, with, with three kids, uh, you know, so I get 1400 for me, 1400 for my wife, and then 1400 for each child. So you can see it's much larger dollars than we had that we were dealing with in 2020. So uh, how, how does this work? Uh, one of the big differences between the, the, the CARES Act stimulus and this new stimulus is, is the phase outs as to who gets it. Okay, so I'm gonna go straight, you know, we had in the, the, uh, the CARES Act, it was a much broader uh, income spectrum that we, that we got to deal with. Under this one, if I'm a single, my, you know, I, if I'm under 175,000 of adjusted gross income, not excuse me, if I'm under $75,000 of adjusted gross income, then I'm gonna get my full uh, $1,400. But then once I go over $80,000, then I'm done. I don't get any. So it's a very narrow window. Head of household, it's 112500 phased out completely at $120,000. Uh, married couples, uh, finally joint, it's 150000 phased out. Um, you know, at uh, 160,000. So really narrow window. And so what we have to do is figure out, you know, how do we get the most money based on really three years worth of tax returns here. So what they're going to do is they're going to look at the, the return that they have on file right now. And so, you know, there'll be 2019 or 2020. So if I haven't filed my 2020, they're going to look at my 2019 tax return. And we're, you know they're kicking out checks right now based on about based on that. Um, we've had several clients you know email us and call us and tell us, hey, I got my check. So what's going to happen is uh, 2019, and if I've already filed my uh, 2020, and that's information that they have, and, and the, the return has actually been processed, um, then they're going to look at my 2020 numbers. So the situation is, let's say I'm married, and for 2019, my income was $130,000 for adjusted gross. Uh, they're going to use that 130. I'm going to get whatever I'm entitled to based on dependents and my, my filing status as far as the number of people on my return. Um, let's say that that same thing, situation is, is that for 2020, my income uh, married finally joined is now 175,000. So I'd be totally phased out, won't get anything. In this situation, I do not want to file that 2020 tax return until I get my rebate check. Because once I get that rebate check, no matter what my income is for 2020 or ultimately 2021, I don't have to pay it back. So uh, the idea here is, is that I look at my 2019, look at my 2020. 2019 is you know lower. I'm going to delay filing my 2020 tax return. Now let's kind of reverse this. Let's say 2019, my income was substantially higher. Say it was $175,000 a year, and my 2020 ends up being $130,000. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm, so right now I'm not getting a check because we're looking at the, my 2020 return, assuming I have, or my 2019 return, assuming I haven't filed my 2020 return. So when I file my 2020 return, there's another determination date that basically they, once that return is processed and they see that it's lower and I would qualify, they'll true that up here and I'll get my check then. Uh, so what we have, we have two determination dates. Uh, the first one uh, is 90 days from the filing date, which is April 15th. Now, they also have another date in there that's kind of a contingency date that goes to September 1st. And the reason they put that in is, is for some reason the IRS would say, hey, we're extending the filing season to uh, June 15th. Uh, well, July 15th is no longer 90 days, so they're making it it's the earlier of that July 15th date 
or September 1st. Uh, now you don't want to push those windows because it, it's processed, not necessarily filed. So we want to be sure your return is actually processed. So, you know, if my 2019 I don't qualify, then uh, my 2020 I will. You know, I want to file that, you know, just as soon as possible. Uh, on reverse, if my 2019 was lower, but 2020 is higher, I'm going to delay filing my 2020 return until I get my check. Now, let, let's say I don't qualify for, for or let me back up. Let, let's say for 2020, I'm really, really close. And, you know, I have the opportunity to kind of drop that adjusted gross income a little bit, either through like an IRA contribution, uh, fully funding my HSA account, uh, and that can get me below that, that number to get my full uh, rebate um, uh, check, then, you know, I, I really need to consider doing that. Additionally, you know, if I'm self-employed, you know, Schedule C, independent contractor, or, or uh, you know, have a small business, you know, I, I could qualify for making a, a SCP contribution, and which is also applied to an S corporation that was on extension at this point. Um, that it, you know, that's going to have the effect of dropping my adjusted gross income and possibly qualifying me. But let's say, you know, 2019, 2020, you know, I don't get my full rebate checks. You know, maybe I get part of it. Um, now, when I file uh, my 2021 return, uh, let's say my income was $300,000 and I got $5,600 in rebate checks because of all my dependents and such, uh, that's good. I'm good to go. It's my money. You know, they're not going to claw that back. Uh, but, but let's say that, that I didn't qualify for anything in, in 2019. Uh, or 2020, but I was fairly close. Uh, one thing you might want to consider looking at right now is how am I funding my 401k if I'm, you know, currently employed? Uh, what I'm going to be looking at is if I'm making Roth contributions to my 401k plan, I may want to change that and make that a deductible 401k uh, contribution. And uh, effectively, that's going to drop my uh, adjusted gross income and possibly qualify me for more of these credits. Uh, so this is one of those times when maybe the Roth is not the best thing to do, uh, you know, even for a younger person. Uh, so, uh, like, like I said, uh, th these, these are bigger dollars that we were dealing with in 2020, and there's a lot of planning opportunities that, that you really need to be thinking about. You know, how am I going to maximize, you know, this amount? And, you know, we've been uh, studying this, for, you know, since March 11th, essentially, um, and coming up with some, some of these ideas. So, uh, you know, think about your situation. You have any questions, you know, reach out, give us a call, drop us an email. And uh, just remember, you know, we always have time for, for you, your friends, and your family. So, you know, if you share this with, you know, somebody you think this might impact, uh, we'd be more than happy to help them. Uh, and you know, be sure to subscribe to this channel because things hit the YouTube channel before I can actually get those out, you know, in, in the email to you. Uh, and you know, so again, look at your situation and have any questions, give us a call.